Hey guys, today I'm going to take you through a practical Docker project that's going to teach you the tools you need to know on how to Dockerize an application. I'm sure this video give you a valuable insight on the step-by-step -step approach we can follow. So by end of this video, we will learn how to create a Docker image using a Docker file, then run the container like Nginx and Python Flask using those images. I hope it sounds interesting and it will be easy to follow and replicate on your own setup. If you face into any issues with the setup or if you found any errors, please let me know in the comment section. On the Visual Studio Terminal, we'll start with our project by creating two directories. I'm going to call it as app and lb for the load balancer. Inside the app directory, we'll provision the Python script and we'll call it as main.py. This will be acting as an entry point for the docker file. We'll see that shortly. I'm going to create one more file called docker file. Please remember that docker file is a case sensitive and should be exactly like this. Next, let's put together a required code for the python script. So let's start with importing the flask module from the Flask library. Also import the socket which is necessary to establish a connection with the containers. With the socket, we can grab the IP address of the application server and store it in IP variable. If you are working with a flask, you already know what this line of code do. But for the beginners and who are dealing with this first time, the flask constructors take the name of the current module as an argument. And the route function of the flask class is a decorator, tells the application which URL should be called the associate function. In a nutshell, the Flask provides a web application to display the content, including the IP address to verify the load balancing functionality. Next, we'll go ahead and build a Docker file for our app. So let's understand what is a Docker file and how it actually looks like. So in order to build a Docker images from an application, we have to copy the content of the application into a Docker file. In a simple term, Docker file is a blueprint for building Docker images. The syntax of the Docker file is super simple. The first line of every docker file start with a from image. So whatever the images you are building, you always want to base it into another image. In our case, we want the flask image built and ready to use, which uses a python image in the backend. Basically it add flask layer on top of python 3.9 image. The next is a copy command. Please remember all the commands you put on a docker file actually execute on a docker container except copy command. The copy command execute on the host. The first parameter is a dot which is a source and the second parameter is a slash app as a target. So I can copy the file that I have in my host. Next is a setting up a working directory as app folder where we have copied the files from our host. With the run syntax basically you can execute any kind of Linux commands. As you can see we are creating a python 3 virtual environment. Then we'll upgrade the pip version to the latest. In the final step of the run, we will create a Flask application into the newly created environment. So you can execute any Linux command that you want. Very important point to note here is the virtual environment that we have created is going to stay inside the container when we bootstrap the new container with the new image. The expose keyword in the Docker file tells the Docker that the container listened for the traffic on the specified port. In this case, our container is going to listen TCP 5000 connections. The last but not the least is the CMD or the command syntax. It is always part of a Docker file which basically execute the entry point instruction or the Linux command for the container. So in our case, it instruct to go to the virtual environment and execute the main.py python script. Now that we have the Docker file ready, let's see how we can actually use it and build image out of it. So in order to build an image using a docker file, we have to provide two parameters. The first one is to give a name for the image. We can specify hyphen t flag for this. We are going to call our name as app and tag as 1.0. And the second required parameter would be the location of the docker file. In this case, the docker file is located on the current directory. So dot will do. Let's execute this one. So we can see it is trying to download a base image first, which is python 3.9 and copy the content to the app directory as mentioned earlier. Further, it sets the working directory as app folder inside the container, then creating a Python environment using the Linux commands and upgrade the pip as well as the Flask library. Finally, we can see the image is built and here is the image ID and the name of it. Now let's run the docker image command here 
I can actually see my image. It says it's created a few seconds ago and we can see the name and the tag for it. You can also see a Python 3.9 which is the base image. Alright, we successfully built a Docker image. We can start a Docker container using the newly created app image. We'll type docker run and turn on the interactive mode with hyphen T. Then publish this container on port 5000 for an external access and finally specify the image name. In this case is app 1.0. Please bear with me, I got some error while running. It's look like there are some issue with uh, socket function. I just fix it by changing it uh, get host by name to get host name as mentioned here. Here is important point to note here. Whenever we modify the Docker file, we need to rebuild the image again. Let's quickly execute the Docker build command again and we'll specify the image name as app 2.0 this time. So our image is ready to use and we can rerun the Docker run command on port number 5000. Let's go ahead and test the application access by HTTP to the host IP address on port 5000. We can see that the page is getting loaded, which is great. So right now we have an application server running and it is providing the IP of the Docker container IP successfully. Next, we'll add an Nginx load balancer in this equation and learn how load balancer manage this traffic in around Robin. So for Nginx, we need to build Nginx configuration, attach them into Docker file to build the container based on our custom requirement. So let's go ahead and create a simple Nginx configuration. So under HTTP, we'll call an application IP and its port number. So we are going to use dot .2 and dot .3 IP with a port number 5000 for both servers. Then include the virtual IP and the port number for the external access. In this case, we are going to use port 8080. Now let's create a docker file for the nginx build. We'll use the base image as nginx. If you don't mention the tag for the image, by default it's take the latest one. Then copy the newly created nginx configuration file to the container under slash etc slash nginx directory. Then expose port 8080 for TCP connection. And we'll set up the entry point command to start the nginx container with the required command. Now we have both the file ready. Let's build a docker image out of the docker file. The step exactly the same as we followed for the app container. We'll name the image as lb1.0. Since the docker file is located in the same directory, we'll use dot for the current directory. Let's execute the build command. We have the nginx image built and ready to use for our project. So in the final stage of this product, we'll run the app container first. Since we have mentioned 172.17.0.2 as an app IP, on the nginx configuration file, we'll make sure that our server IP also configured with the same. For that, we'll use hyphen IP flag for the static IP assignment. Let's start the second container with 172.17.0.3 IP. Now quickly check the health of the both containers. So both are running on port 5000. Let's run the docker inspect to find the details about the network configuration. All looks good as we as we need it. So finally, we are running the load balancer container with the newly created nginx image. So here we'll use port 8080 for the external access. Now the server is ready to use. Let's verify the container status. So we have all the containers running. So as a final step, we'll go ahead and try to access the nginx load balancer with the host IP followed by the port number 8080. So the server seems to be responding. Here you can see the container IP is currently shows as 172.17.0.2 which is our first app server. Let's refresh the page. Now the response came from dot .3 which means second app server. Let's rerun again and see how the request responds. So again it's coming from the first server. So it appears that we are we are seeing the Nginx load balancer responding to those requests in a round robin fashion. So this is how we have designed this application server to work. Again, this is a perfect starter project for learning dockerization. You can take it further and expand based on your design and requirement. I hope this demo project find it useful. If you like my content, please subscribe my channel. I'll see you in the next video with more exciting topic. Thank you.